Hey guys, Fox here. Um, it's nearly the end to quite a uh, really crappy year, let's be honest. <laughs> uh, let's call it a villainous year. Um, but besides the obvious and all the crappy things that's happened over this year, um, a few things to be thankful for. One, uh, my son has finished his chemotherapy and fingers crossed all that shitty cancer is gone. Uh, we'll find out real soon. Uh, but signs are looking good. Two, uh, I had a good job that's held strong through this whole crappy year. feel bad for those that it didn't do so well for. And three, there was uh, some really good games to come out this year that I've played. Um, so I want to talk about my uh, top five uh, games that I played this year. So we'll uh, do uh, Fox's top games of the year and uh, I want to start off with a few big name games well some fairly big name games that I wanted to play this year but I didn't get to go ahead and show you those hopefully I will play them uh, this upcoming year soon uh, first one is Outer Wilds um, this looked very interesting to me and always wanted to play it uh, limited run went ahead and uh, released this one out Next one is The Outer Worlds. <laughs> uh, this one always interests me. I just never got around. It was just kind of took a backseat to all the other games. Um, hoping one day I will get to this and crack that seal. Here's a few big ones. Number one here, uh, The Last of Us Part Two. Really wanted to start this one, but it just came out at a bad time when I was playing other games. So it got shelved. Uh, really plan on playing it. Uh, I know Video Game Awards gave this one lots of accolades. Uh, so I'm sure it's going to be excellent. Next one I really want to play and I hopefully I'll play real soon is Yakuza Like a Dragon. I hear so many good things about how this is a great Yakuza that's an RPG turn-based battles and how the main character is a, a big Dragon Quest fan, so that's how he sees life. So that really interests me. Can't wait to play that one. And of course, the controversial Cyberpunk 2077. Um, I probably would have popped this in if I didn't know that it was an utter shit show on the consoles. Now, I know on the PS5, it's got that upgrade and it. it's far better, but that's to me that's kind of unacceptable that uh, I have lots of friends who are playing this and are just saying it's borderline unplayable so I think we're all gonna shelve it I'm sure it's gonna be great I'm sure it is great uh, but once uh, CD Projekt Red uh, uh, patches the crap out of this one um, I'll wait until they fix it now here are games that I played but didn't make my list, so I wanted to do that. So <laughs> I wanted to share with you pretty much all the games that I did play, uh, but uh, um, they didn't quite make the list. This one really close came to making the list. Uh, it definitely did not come out this year, uh, but it's something I played a lot of that this year, and that's Slay the Spire, a nice roguelite. Uh, it's a deck builder roguelite. I've probably beaten this 30 times. I've played through it so many times. I have a lot of fun with Slay the Spire. And it's on like every platform. And I'm thinking about getting it on my phone because I can just, you know, at a break at work, I can just pop yeah, and play a, a few rounds of Slay the Spire. Uh, Pokemon Sword. Uh, Pokemon slowly... Uh, what, what, how do I want to put it? Uh, it's not holding the great candle that it once did for me. Uh, the originals and gold, you know, through the DS were pretty damn good. The last few I've really just not enjoyed a whole lot. I didn't even finish this one. I got to the, uh, I think the final four, whatever they're called, uh, beat them. And then I was like, okay, good. I'm done. And I shelved it. It was, I don't know. Pokemon's is just too easy nowadays. Um, Landgrasser 1 and 2, this little collection that came out. Now, I only played Landgrasser 1. I didn't play the second one. Um, I played a lot of the Landgrasser mobile games, so this was very familiar to me. And uh, I know the first game is called uh, no, it's Warsong on the Genesis for us. So, 
I really liked it. Love the new art style. Love the upgrades to the graphics. The music's really stellar. It's it's a really good strategy RPG. Another strategy RPG, War Groove. Uh, one that I kind of had some fun with, uh, but the uh, thing I didn't really care about it was that your units didn't upgrade at all. <laughs> well, I mean, they didn't level up. I'm used to my strategy RPGs having uh, a way to that your individual troops or units got better and better. And this is just more like strictly the tactical side of it. I mean, it's still good. Don't get me wrong. Up next, nice little visual novel called Valhalla. Where you play as cyberpunk future, <laughs> kind of funny, as you play as her, the bartender, um, and you talk with all these characters and learn all kinds of different things. It's a pretty interesting uh, take on a visual novel, and it's got some gameplay in it where you make drinks, you know, because they you have to guess. They give you the, the patrons that come in and talk to you give you hints on what they want to drink, and you just kind of gotta put it together. And hopefully get it right. It was not bad. Animal Crossing, another close one to make the list. Um, it's just that I go through phases of this game. You know, I'll play, I played it heavily when it first came out, and then I stopped. And I played a little bit during the summer, and then I stopped. And then when Halloween came around, I played it for it, played with it a little bit. You know, for a couple weeks, then I stopped. And then the Christmas stuff or the holiday stuff came out, and I've been playing it every once in a while. So. It's a great game, good Animal Crossing game. Streets of Rage 4, fantastic beat em up. A very good, long awaited sequel to the Streets of Rage series. Some folks didn't like the art style, but uh, I actually liked it a lot. So, um, great beat em up. Highly suggested to anybody, especially if you're a Streets of Rage fan, because it's got some Yuzo music in it. Wasteland 3, um, you know, I thought this was a buggy disaster until I heard what happened to Cyberpunk. <laughs> um, this was really buggy. I had a lot of problems, a lot of crashing and stuff like that. I got maybe halfway through the game and then ended up shelving it. So I may revisit it again one day, but uh, mm. Diablo 3, finally played this. Played it with my buddies. We played it on the hardest setting we could, you know, initially, and completely tore this thing apart. It was pretty boring uh, for me. I know a lot of people who love Diablo, but uh, just for me and my buddies who were playing through it, it, it was pretty much a miss. It, we tore through it really quick. I know there's harder settings and stuff, but uh, we had no desire to play it again. Um, so not big on Diablo 3. And Cosmic Star Heroine. This was a delight. It was a really good old school RPG. I had a lot of fun with this. A really good story. Decent character development. Fun combat system. Really, really good music. This was a great little indie JRPG title. I highly suggest it to any of you. And it's pretty short too. You could probably platinum this sucker in 15 hours. Alright. Time to start with my games of the year i'm gonna do one honorable mention here because it just for my personal reasons i decided it didn't qualify to go on the list and that's persona full five uh royal and because to me this is already this is just a re-release with some added content and uh even though this game was fantastic and very well considered to be a game of the year um, I already gave that accolade to its original release way back, so I don't want to do that again because I, I consider it pretty much the same game. Now, number five, River City Girls. Now, I know this came out last fall, but uh, I got the release from Limited Run this year and first played through it. This was an absolute delight of a beat-em-up. Um, the folks at Wayfor definitely know how to put together a game, as we already know because of the um, <laughs> their work with the Shantae series and many other games. Um, but I really liked the characters of Kyoko and Misako. It's really cool. It's the girlfriends of the original River City guys, uh, uh, Ricky and uh, Kuni. Yeah, Kuni Kun. So 
they are going to go save their boyfriends this time. And the music's really good. The graphics are fantastic. Sprite work. Really fun uh, banter between the girls. Good dialogue. It's hilarious. I like the upgrades. It is just a wonderful, wonderful game. And I really liked it. I think I've beaten it three times. Close to getting the Platinum. I know I have the Switch version here, but I got it on the PS4 so I can play with some buddies. Um, but uh, really close to getting the Platinum on this one. Really liked River City Girls. That's number five. Number four. Big game that everybody was waiting to come out this year. And that is Final Fantasy VII Remake. This uh, really surprised me. I was not expecting it to be as good as it was. I honestly have been burned so many other times with, you know, remakes or quote unquote remasters and you're just like, ah, this sucks. What did they do? They really did a good job. This was really a um, real true, kind of kind of like a love letter to the fans. Now they did put their own spin on it, coming, you know, especially near the end, you know, they wanted to kind of change it up a little bit. I mean, obviously the combat's very different. Uh, but the the story really runs true with the original, but you can see little things that uh, make it its own. I don't, I don't want to give away too much because there's uh, you, you really want to play it. <laughs> um, the soundtrack is phenomenal. Highly suggest it. Anyways, I'm going to give number four to Final Fantasy VII. Number three is Trails of Cold Steel 4. Now, granted, caveat here, I haven't quite finished it. I'm very close, but I am very confident in where I'm gonna put this one on my list. So, Trails of Cold Steel is a long series that I've loved and that's been on a lot of my game of the year lists, but I don't think it's ever quite taken the game of the year. This one was close too, but I played two other games that were so good. This was a very fitting, ending to the Trails of Cold Steel or uh, the series. The, uh, man, I love these games. And, you know, combining with some of the characters from the other uh, Kaseki games, you know, Trails in the Sky and uh, the other one from Crossbell, I forgot the name of it. That never came to America, unfortunately, the one with Lloyd right there. Um, it's so good. I absolutely loved it. All the characters coming together. The story's so good. I, I can't, I can't I'd have to do a whole video on this, but uh, well deserving of the number three slot. Number two. Coming out of left field and a very surprising one for me. And absolutely loved it and tore through it really quickly because I just wanted to keep playing it, keep playing it, keep playing it. That's 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. This from Vanillaware was a real surprise to me. Oh, absolute gem. I can't believe that a story can be told so well in such a different way. The way the narrative was written for this game was phenomenal. Something I really never experienced before. Now, it's mostly a visual novel, but it also mixes in uh, some strategy combat. Now, it's real-time strategy, except for when you're making your moves. I'm going to set this down. Ah. When you fight in the battles it can be really quick as long as you know what you're doing it's not graphically powerhouse but it's really enjoyable for what you're doing um i liked how you can take take your different characters or approach it in different ways of how you're going to uh, get through the fights but the the real star is the story mode the, the visual novel section uh, the way they did it they didn't make it boring how they had every single piece of text voice acted uh, really really threw me for a loop and it was impressive especially the English voice acting now I can't say what it how good it is for the uh, Japanese dub but the English dub was phenomenal there was a lot of major voice actors that I recognized in there this was an absolute gem I uh, I gotta say anybody who even if you're not a visual novel fan which I'm mostly not this was fantastic and I would highly suggest it to anybody. Alright guys, number one. Now, unfortunately, this one is a 
digital release. Um, so I, some of you guys might have already figured it out. I'm gonna set it down here on the floor and I got it on the Switch. But number one for me, something I played very last minute and have been playing it non-stop, except to squeeze in some Trails of Cold Steel. And that's Hades on the Switch. I, w I was on the fence about this game and I have no idea why. I love super giant games. Empire was okay, but I loved Bastion. I really like Transistor. And Hades, I think, has topped it. Uh, the way I see Hades is it's pretty much, it feels kind of like Bastion, except it's a roguelite and a dungeon crawler that I really like. And I like the lore that it has using all these uh, the Greek gods. Um, and the Underworld, Olympus, all that stuff, and they're so well voice acted, and the artwork is phenomenal. I believe that's some Gen Z work. And the story it tells, each time you die and you come back to uh, Hades Lair, and you, the Underworld, and you have new things to talk about, and you come and talk to everybody, you give you know, gifts to people, you upgrade uh, the world a little bit, you know, and you can slightly upgrade your character, and then you just go at it again. Keep crawling, keep getting higher and higher as far as you can. It's such a delight, you know, and all the different weapons you can do, it brings different challenges, all the different boons you can grab, makes the game just, you know, infinite possibilities on how you want to make uh, Zagreus. And that's, that's the main character, Zagreus and Hades' son. So you can play this in so many different ways and it's different every time you play through it. It's such a blast and I can't believe this one. I almost skipped this one. I don't know what I was thinking. Don't skip on Hades. It is that good, guys. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. This is my games of the year and I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know what you think about your games of the year or what you thought of my list. All right. Thanks for watching.